Hi, my name is Ted Cross and I'm Director of Product Management here at Novi Labs. We are very excited to have released Model Engine, the final component of our self-service platform. Model Engine gives you the power to build machine learning models even using Novi's proprietary technology and algorithms. First step is creating a model input file. And this is essentially which wells are you going to be passing to the model. So let me go ahead and hit the create button here. And it's going to connect into our uh, existing data sets that you've already built within Data Engine. I'm going to build a uh, Wilson Basin demo model here. It's uh, where I'm, uh, I've worked uh, for, for many years, Basin familiar to my heart. Um, but of course, you see we have a bunch of different ones there. It's whichever basin you want to work with. We have experience all over the place. So you see here we have a set of inclusion rules, and these are basically just filtering rules that you use to select the wells to pass to the model. We have a set of default ones here in place, like the well needs to have a lateral length, it needs to have at least 30 days of production, and then we have previews of the number of exclusions and exclusion percentage. That would be essentially 24% of wells would fail this rule here of needing at least 30 days of production. You can add in custom rules as well. So for instance, I may want to filter on formation. That's a very common one that we, we often like to do. And uh, for that, I'll say it's in the middle Bakken or the three forks. I don't really care so much about any of these other formations uh, for this model. Um, there's so few, for instance, Charles Wells or Lodgepole Wells that are not even worth including. So um, I've selected those. I hit the OK button here. And you see it's, it's kind of holding up because uh, it's, it's just waiting for whenever I say that it's ready, ready to preview uh, by hitting that little wheel button right there. Ran pretty quickly, so that, that filtered out 1,200 wells right there. So of course, there's lots of stuff you can do here. For instance, you could filter out on uh, propent. So the Bakken is an old play. You have many pump and pray jobs, essentially, from, uh, from back in the day. So maybe we want that to be at least 75 pounds per foot of propent or something like that, just as a, a simple example. Of course, there's a lot of flexibility that you can do here, and that would be a lot of the time that you would spend, you know, building models and iterating on them is just just getting this exactly right. But it's it's very easy to just just do a first pass right here, um, building a model input from for say a, a regional model or for uh, you know a local AOI model or whatever your use cases are. Next up is building an actual model. This is the this is the fun part here. Uh, again, I'm going to hit the green create button, and let's call this one demo Williston and you know 2022 Q1. Next, you choose a type that can be pre-drill forecasting or PDP forecasting. Um, I'm the pre-drill guy, so that's what I'll go with. But of course, we have lots of customers who do uh, focus on PDPs. And let me go ahead and find a Williston Basin uh, input file here. Go grab that demo input file. You see I've got 1,100, 1,200 wells. 11,000, 11, 12,000 wells. <laughs> Hit the next button. So now I get a chance to choose which features the model is going to use. Features are kind of a machine learning speak for variables. And you see here over on the left, we have hundreds of different variables that uh, we generate. Um, these can be coming from subsurface. You can upload your own here as well, um, but really there's a lot of those. So I'm going to just filter it down to completions for now. You see I've got all the basics here. I want to include profit per length. That's going to be pounds per foot in this case, uh, fluid per length. Um, let me also go grab formation, uh, lateral length, and uh, TVD. I'm going to cancel that one out. Um, then I will go grab uh, geology. For that one, you see a bunch of different variables here. These are part of our off-the-shelf variables that are available for any of our uh, any of the major shale plays in the United States and in Canada. But you have things like permeability, porosity, water saturation. Um, I know for the Bakken that it, it doesn't matter as much what the water saturation. Well, it doesn't matter as much what the um, uh, TOC values are for the formation of interest because the lower Bakken and the upper Bakken are the source rocks for the middle Bakken. Um, for those, I'm going to want to use the TOC values specific to those formations rather than for the formation of interest. Um, that looks pretty good. I'm also going to include V-Clay. That's usually a pretty predictive feature. Next, I'll go through to completions variables. Uh, actually, I've already done that. Let's cancel out. Let's go to spacing. And here you see uh, the different, um, at this case, it's over 60 different spacing features that we generate. Um, 
we like wells in radius. That's a one that's often pretty useful, and that's just the number of wells that are within whatever radius that you've configured is. I'm also going to go in here and grab some other things like parent count, um, parent uh, days online. Those are going to be ones that I'm going to use as well. Um, and then let me grab uh, a couple uh, lateral neighbors. So let's say how close is the closest lateral neighbor and then how close, let me go grab a staggered neighbor here because a lot of times in the Bakken you have a stagger between the three forks and the middle Bakken. So that's pretty good there. You could also go grab a survey derived features like toe angle or tortuosity if those are of interest. Um, those are things that we generate. Now here I've got a list of 18 features over here on the right. Uh, I might want to use a smaller number of that for modeling. Let's say I wanted to take it down to just 12 uh, different features. So uh, by turning that on and configuring it to setting it to 12, it's only going to be um, passing 12 features to the model. So essentially what the model will be doing is it's going to be dropping six of those that it thinks are less predictive. And we have some algorithms that run that. And if you're more interested in that, just drop us a line and we can, we're happy to explain it to you. You can also click this override button over here to the right. Let's say you want to make sure that the model is using fluid per length, prop and per length, formation, lateral length. That's, that's a pretty common. You just want to make sure that those, those are used. You can click those buttons um, or for, well, for, for whatever features you're interested in. Then I hit the next button and I reach the model parameter screen. So for this one, I can configure which produced fluids that the model is going to be forecasting. Um, in this case, I will do oil, gas, and water. Um, you can choose the subset if you want uh, for whatever reason. You can also choose whether or not to normalize the production by lateral length. What that means is that the model will be predicting uh, barrels per foot, uh, MCF per foot, etc. Usually that will give more accurate models, but uh, you have the option here to turn that on or off. Then I have the training interval that will set um, how long out the forecasts are going. So it will give me a time series of forecasts going from day 30 mm -hmm. out to day 1080. If I wanted to change that, the Bakken's an older place, so you can probably go out a little bit further compared to, you know, let's say the Delaware. Then finally, I have the test group definition. So this includes things like, um, should I be withholding a random 20% of pads to, to judge how well my model is performing? Should I be doing this uh, on a, any time basis? Uh, we like to call this a lot of times a time machine. <laughs> uh, so uh, you can kind of, you know, decide that, all right, well, let's go and, and, uh, cut off the data uh, one year ago. So we'll go back to, uh, let's go back to February 1st, 2020, or 2021. So what it would do, it would, it would uh, cut all the data, production data, new wells off at that date. It would train the model on the, on the data from before that date and it would forecast it and judge it against the data from after that date. So that can be a pretty powerful tool um, in, in helping you evaluate the models. And then finally, you have a custom. So if you've uploaded your own test train definition, you can also upload that and select that. So I'm going to use that time machine cutoff. Um, next up, I get a, a landing page to review the model. Just like normal, it'll send me an email based on the username that I've selected here. But if I wanted to enter in another email address, uh, you could also do that right there. So if you had uh, uh, you know, a, a colleague that you wanted to inform, you could do that. Um, then I have a basic summary of the, di the different uh, items, like uh, what, what, uh, what's the version number, what's the well count, what, how many features am I using, uh, all that type of stuff. And so finally, I hit the Save and Build button, and it goes in and kicks off a build in the cloud, not using any resources from your desktop. It's all going um, with the power of cloud compute. Uh, something like this, basin-wide model, that's you know, maybe going to take a couple hours um, you know, to run through everything. Not, not too bad at all. Obviously, it'd be shorter if you're doing a, a smaller model. Um, but I'll get that email whenever it's done, so then I can go and, and view the results. And finally, whenever I'm done, you can hit this uh, Publish button right here, um, and that'll publish it for usage and forecast engine. Um, otherwise, it'll just publish the results to Novi Cloud for you to go evaluate. Once you say, yes, this is good, you go hit that little Publish button, and you can send it off to, uh, to Novi Cloud, or just to, to Forecast Engine for use in forecasting. So that's it for uh, Model Engine. Would love to hear your feedback and the different use cases that you're using. Feel free to drop me a line at tcross at novilabs.com. Um, and uh, good luck. Hope it goes well.